Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. Let's get right to the Word of God. Friends, today it is my great pleasure to introduce one of my favorite books of the Bible. It's the book of Ruth. Now, Ruth is a really short book. It only has four chapters. So these four chapters are more than what's typically integrated and connected with each other, forming one complete story. The book of Ruth somewhat reads like a play with a number of different acts and a number of different settings, but it is certainly one continuous story. And so the Talmud, the Jewish Talmud, says that Samuel the prophet was the author, the author also of uh, 1 Samuel and uh, some of 2 Samuel. The book of Ruth is primarily about um, God and God's relationship with Israel. But it is, to Jewish people, it's also extremely significant for several other reasons. First, uh, Ruth is a convert to Judaism. In some ways, she becomes the prototype for converts to Judaism. And um, I'll read you her little pledge or her little statement of joining Um, as a Jewish person with Israel's God in the first chapter. So for Jewish people, it's very significant in that Ruth converts to Judaism and um, does so in a very excellent exemplary way. But in addition to that, Ruth provides the connection of King David's lineage and gives the fact that Ruth and her husband Boaz, her eventual husband Boaz, become the great-grandparents of King David. So some scholars believe the, the main purpose of the book of Ruth is just to give the lineage of David. I do not believe that. And so to Israel, it has more significance than just the fact that Ruth was a convert and it gives the genealogy of David. But to Christians, it also provides a very mystical story Uh, that in some ways conveys the bride of Christ. And so I'll go into that. But from a Christian perspective, Ruth typifies those who are the bride of Christ. I'll explain that as we go forward. Boaz is a type of Jesus Christ himself. And Naomi, Ruth's mother-in-law, guides her life decisions and leads her into a marriage with Boaz, typifying that aspect of the work of the Holy Spirit. The story is set in Bethlehem, and of course, um, Bethlehem was where Jesus was born. It was also the place where David was born. The name Bethlehem means house of bread. And so one day, the bread of life, Jesus Christ, is to be born in the house of bread. Ruth first joins herself to her mother-in-law, Naomi, and to Israel's God. And then she's tested for her virtue. Um, She has nothing. She's a very poor widow. But she meets a very rich man, Boaz, who's um, very rich and powerful and In some ways, he's uh, related to her by marriage. And so eventually, Ruth the Gentile marries Boaz the Jew. And this, to Christians, typifies the one new man in Christ, Jew and Gentile together. Boaz is her kinsman, as I mentioned, but he's her kinsman redeemer, meaning that he is a blood relative that has the ability to redeem her from her poverty and her situation. More on that later. And as I mentioned, Ruth becomes the great-grandmother of King David and ultimately the ancestor of Jesus Christ. So let's begin the book of Ruth now in chapter 1. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judah, together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in the country of Moab. The man's name was Elimelech, and his wife's name was Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Malon, and Kilion. They were Ephratites from Bethlehem, Judah, and they went to Moab and lived there. Now Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. They married Moabite women, one named Orpha and the other Ruth. After they had lived there for about ten years, both Malon and Kilion also died, and Naomi was left without her two sons and without her husband. When Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing food for them, she and her daughters-in-law prepared to return home from there. With her two daughters-in-law, she left the place where she had been living and set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah. Then Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's home. 
May the Lord show you kindness as you have shown kindness to your dead husbands and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. Then she kissed them goodbye, and they wept aloud and said to her, We will go back with you to your people. But Naomi said, Return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? Am I going to have any more sons who could become your husbands? Return home, my daughters. I'm too old to have another husband. Even if I thought there was still hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight and then gave birth to sons, would you wait until they grew up? Would you remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters, it's more bitter for me than for you, because the Lord's hand has turned against me. At this they wept aloud again. Then Orpha kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung to her. Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and to her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, Don't urge me to leave you now or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Where you die, I will die and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if Even death separates you and me. When Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. So the two women went on until they came to Bethlehem. When they arrived in Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them, and the women exclaimed, Can this be Naomi? Don't call me Naomi, she told them. Call me Mara, because the Almighty has made my life very bitter. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why called me Naomi? The Lord has afflicted me. The Almighty has brought misfortune to me. So Naomi returned from Moab, accompanied by Ruth the Moabite, her daughter-in-law, arriving in Bethlehem as the harvest was beginning. And so the setting is given in this chapter. The setting, of course, is first Bethlehem. They come out of Bethlehem because there's a famine. A little bit of irony there. So Naomi and her husband and two sons go to the land of Moab. Now, the Moabites were not Jews. In fact, the Moabites had opposed the Jews when they were coming out of the promised land. And it was forbidden for a Moabite to enter uh, the nation of Israel to the 10th generations to worship the the God of Israel. And so Ruth would have been, um, if you can stretch the term a little bit, not kosher. But nevertheless, one of Naomi's sons married Ruth. And so they lived in Moab about 10 years, and then her husband died, and um, Naomi's husband died, and the other son died also. So Naomi tries to send them back, Ruth and her other daughter-in-law away. The the first daughter-in-law went, but Ruth made a commitment to Naomi, and Ruth's commitment and her profession of faith have, as I mentioned before, become the prototype for someone converting to Judaism. So this is what Ruth said in verse 16 and 17. Don't urge me to leave you or turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. So friends, that powerful profession of love for Naomi and commitment to Naomi's God, the God of Israel, Yahweh, is exemplary for those who wish to convert to Judaism. And and I'll carry it one step further. Those words make excellent marriage vows. More on that later. But the, the marriage of Ruth to Israel, to Israel's God first, is apparent in that text. So the two women go on until they come to Bethlehem. It was at the time of the barley harvest, and so that, that'll become significant later in the story. But the, the scene we leave in chapter 1 is they're arriving back in Bethlehem. So more, um, more on all of that later. But Lord, we just acknowledge that this Ruth exemplified an excellent spirit, first in caring for Naomi as an individual, her mother-in-law who was now bereaved of her husband and her two sons. Ruth stuck with her to comfort her, but far beyond that, Ruth committed to Israel's God, to Naomi's God, and her profession of faith is extraordinary. She said that the people of God would be her people, 
that she would live and die with the people of God and uh, not even death would separate her from the people of God. Lord, we pray the same for us. May we live with the people of God. May we strive to always be part of the kingdom of God and work with the Lord of, of Israel and the Lord of heaven. Lord, we love you. We recognize that um, this extraordinary woman gives us a target to shoot for. Help us, Lord, to be as virtuous as Ruth. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.